In just a few years, one of humanity's most iconic achievements, the International Space Station, will make a dramatic return to Earth, plunging into the Pacific Ocean. But why is it coming down? And what does this mean for the future of space safety? NASA has planned the end of the ISS for Point Nemo, also known as the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility, is the point in the ocean that is the farthest from any land. It lies in the South Pacific Ocean, about 2,688 kilometers from the nearest land masses. Point Nemo is so isolated that the closest humans to it are usually astronauts on the International Space Station, which orbits around 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Its remote location makes it ideal for intentionally crashing old, defunct satellites and spacecraft, including the upcoming deorbiting of the International Space Station. Here, the station's remains will sink into the ocean, far from human settlements. To guide the ISS to its final resting place, NASA has partnered with SpaceX. Using a modified Dragon vehicle, equipped with extra thrusters and reinforced structures, SpaceX will help steer the ISS through Earth's atmosphere, making sure it comes down exactly where planned. While the ISS will have the assistance of a powerful SpaceX-built deorbit vehicle, most smaller satellites are left to fall uncontrolled. Without careful guidance, these objects tumble through the atmosphere at high speeds, sometimes leaving significant debris that survives re-entry. The risks are real and growing. Uncontrolled re-entries have already resulted in debris fragments striking Earth. In fact, airplane routes are now monitored for risks of falling space debris. With thousands of satellites due to be launched, there's a growing chance that space junk could collide with an aircraft. It's a risk that requires rapid notification systems, rerouting air traffic when necessary to avoid catastrophic accidents in the skies. But these impacts aren't just about visible debris. As satellites and spacecraft break apart and vaporize, they release metals, plastics, and other materials, changing the chemical makeup of Earth's upper atmosphere. Studies show a growing concentration of materials that didn't used to be there, microscopic particles left behind from melting spacecraft. These pollutants may alter atmospheric chemistry and temperature dynamics, and we're only beginning to understand their long-term effects. With satellite numbers growing rapidly, low Earth orbit is becoming crowded. Uncontrolled debris adds new challenges, and without proper deorbiting, these objects could re-enter the atmosphere creating risks for people on the ground. Recently, the U.S. shortened the time that satellites can stay in low Earth orbit after they stop working, from 25 years to just five years. This policy aims to reduce the risk of uncontrolled re-entries. But is it enough? Engineers are working on new solutions for safe deorbiting, including using tethers, drag sails, and magnetic capture technology to pull debris down to controlled re-entry zones. These advancements could allow for safer deorbiting of mid-size and large satellites, reducing risks to both the atmosphere and those below. Deorbiting the ISS is just the beginning. As we look to the future of space exploration, the need for sustainable practices is more pressing than ever. If we don't address the space junk problem now, Earth's orbit risks becoming too congested for safe navigation, affecting everything from space exploration to communications here on Earth. The upcoming ISS deorbit signals a need for global collaboration, innovation, and regulation to keep our orbits clear, protect our atmosphere, and pave the way for a safe and sustainable future in space.